I guess you could say. It's time to start the show or some shit. And welcome to Rejected, where we either reject or rejoice in all things everything. Am I talking fast? That's because with today we are finishing Seven Deadly Rejects with a film by one of my favourite creative minds, Tim fucking Burton. Ah yes, Tim Burton. If anyone in today's society said that they had any ideas of Tim Burton's, he would be taken seriously. When people say, who's on your Mount Rushmore of filmmaking, they usually say, Hitchcock, Coppola, Kubrick and Tarantino. I would have to have a small exhibit to the side just dedicated to Tim Burton. I would even go as far to say Tim Burton surpasses some of them due to the fact that the majority of the work in his resume is original. Nightmare Before Christmas, Edward Scissorhands, Frank and Weenie and Corpse Bride just to name a few. Hell, even his early work with the animation Vincent is a masterpiece. That would terrify me when I was younger. Yet I couldn't help myself but watch it over and over and over again. But today we're covering one of his live action films, which is a widely respected and beloved classic. From the minds of Michael McDowell, Larry Wilson and Warren Scarron comes the story of a couple looking for help from a bio-exorcist after they find out they have died. Adam and Barbara Maitland are dead. Wonderful. And now a family have moved into their home who they want out. But after the couple are introduced to a bio-exorcist, they discover a young girl may be the chance to enjoy their afterlife. So let's not beat around the banana boat. Let's get into this. Ah, a Tim Burton film featuring models. I see what they did there. This house is too big for you. It really ought to be for a couple with a family. You know? Who is this bitch? And why does she keep harassing them about not having kids? Fuck you. Ah. Adam and Barbara might try for a child whilst they're on vacation at home. That's nice. Hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> Fucking dog. Welcome home, Adam and Barbara. You're dead. But at least you get a manual. Ooh la la, what do we got huh. here? The make Sounds like you have an admirer. <laughs> Look nice and stupid too. Kinda. <laughs> Looks like Jane got a wish and gets to sell the house. Selfish bitch. And the new family are moving in. Don't they look peaceful? Okay. Now, a lot of people might not know what I'm about to go on about. But it's something that I actually genuinely need to cover. Because if I just gloss over it, then that's part of the problem. Jeffrey Jones. A major figure in the 80s and 90s, he was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Howard the Duck, and The Hunt for Red October. But Jeffrey Jones in modern day is known for two things. Deadwood and being a registered sex offender. He was found in possession of child pornography and was accused to have solicited a 14-year-old boy into posing nude in which he pled no contest to the Fennelly charge. Jeffrey Jones is still getting work to this day. They have a Deadwood movie recently, which he's in. I just wanted to get that cover so we can watch the film, because if you know about it and I didn't mention it, it's one of them. So I just wanted to cover it, get out of the way. But Jeffrey Jones, and to all the people that are still hiring him for work, shame on you. But now, on a lighter note, Adam and Barbara are trying to scare the Deetses away. Not too much success. <laughs> the Sandworm, I absolutely adore the look of the sandworm. Hell, they have an exhibit featuring the work and art of Tim Burton, and one of the major things going through the exhibit is the sandworm. Gorgeous. You see, throughout the film, you can see the Burton touch, the artistry, the designs, the colour. It is full of Tim Burton's visuals. It is a Tim Burton directed film, yes, but oh, it's so good. And here things start to get interesting. Lydia Dietz can see Adam and Barbara. And this is the last time we have to put up with Jane. Bitch. And here he is, the star of the film. 
so Adam and Barbara are stuck and need some help. Time to meet some interesting characters. Magician's Apprentice, the hunter possessed by Voodoo, Fat Guy Swallowed a Fork, Shark Attack, Snake in a Bag, The Smoker, Flat Earther, and Zip Neck. And here we see the Lost Souls Room, where ghosts are kept when they have been exorcised. It's kind of a shame really, isn't it? Even if they're demons or they were just ghosts. If you've been exorcised, that's death for the dead. Juno tells us about Beetlejuice. He claimed he could get rid of the living, and has been hiding in Adam's model village. Huh. And he was also Juno's assistant? And can I just say, a very subtle plot device that is actually commented later on in the film. You know what they say about people who commit suicide? In the afterlife, they become civil servants. The receptionist has slit wrists. Juno has her throat cut. The hung guy, the flat guy. These are clearly suicides. And due to these people checking out before their time was up, they are now working in the afterlife. It just shows the small details that go into the story. And as I said, even Otho comments that if you commit suicide in the afterlife, you become civil servants. Something so small. But perfect. Adam and Barbara are starting their hauntings, and they're going badly. Lydia takes photos of them, and then notices the ghosty's got no feeties. Yeah. Beetlejuice is out of the grave and is now released, and here is a five star performance by Michael Keaton. Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now what do you think? You think I'm qualified? Completely knocked it out of the park. This is a character that just jumps off the screen. What do you think of this? <laughs> you like it? And here is a scene that is famous for media students. Even when I studied at university in media, we discussed this scene several times. Weirdly. They actually enjoyed it. I believe they could make money off of this stunt. And Otho has the manual. And Beetlejuice is about to show us what he's capable of. The beetle snake is one of the creepiest things ever and demonstrates just how much he does not value life. And the stage is set. Beetlejuice believes that Lydia is the key to his freedom and the Maitlands have been ordered to use their own abilities to either remove the Dieters from the house or learn to live with them. Live was a weird word to pick there, but it made sense. Ish. By the time you read this, I will be gone. Oh, Lydia, don't do that. You'll be sorting through paperwork for the rest of your afterlife. Wait, is that a doghouse in the background? Ah, oh, poor dog. Jeez. Barbara begins showing a maternal care for Lydia, and her and Adam have decided to live with the Dietzes. Again. Live. But the Dietzes have other plans, using Otho to perform an exorcism. As we've seen, an exorcism is the death for the dead. Oof. Ooh, ooh, Barbara, ooh. You're not looking to, uh... Ooh, ooh. Adam, I bet you're glad you didn't have to live with her till she got older. She'd have looked like that. And there is only one thing Lydia can do to save them. Sure, I can help them. But Beetlejuice convinces Lydia that for him to cross to the living, him and Lydia must get married. Beetlejuice. 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 It's showtime. And for this bit, I don't want to say a word. Let's just cue a montage of Beetlejuice being awesome. Attention, game word shoppers. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I won't do two shows a night anymore, babe. I won't. I won't do. The Maitlands, uh, I think uh, they've had enough exercise for a night. <laughs> Not so fast, brown boy. We're gonna have some last. <laughs> ah! 
Adam and Barbara must now stop Beetlejuice before he marries Lydia and is permanently living. Sure, that's gonna go well. sound worm would come in handy. It's good to have pets. The house is looking back to normal with the Maitlands and the Deeses are living peacefully and the film ends with another iconic scene. And seeing as Beetlejuice died again, he now gets the fun of waiting in the lobby. Just don't be a dick. And there it is, ending on a high note, and leaving you with a song in your head to continue the positivity as the credits roll. Beetlejuice was always going to be the film that ended the Seven Deadly Rejects, just for the fact that when it is the season of the witch, a lot of people overlook it. But I had to do something that made me happy at the end of it, especially when it's the favourite time of the year for me. So, it's him. For story, this is what I call original. I have zero negativity towards it. Maybe a few things were a little off, but that would be nitpicking, such as, if Adam and Barbara have no idea on what they're doing, how do they know how they could rip their faces off and cut their heads off without the knowledge of doing so? See? Nitpicking. So story gets a four, and for execution, Burton style, Elfman music, and nothing was quite like it at the time. A style that I adore. Yes, some effects have not aged the best, but still fantastic. And that gets a 4. Beetlejuice gets 8 out of 10 and is rejoiced. How fuck this series ended on a high note. Does this mean I'm gonna now take a break for a while? Nope, I'll see you next week for another review. Seriously. But instead, I've now got to start thinking about Christmas. What am I gonna do for Christmas? Don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you just yet, but I will be dropping hints. So, uh, Keep your eyes peeled.